I got a new PC that came in, and it is an Intel Enthusiast Phantom Canyon. Oh, this is a beautiful piece of art that is also very powerful and a small form factor that can fit on the backside of your monitor, an i7, 2060, all the fixins. So let's get into this video because I'm really excited to show you everything this thing can do down to FPS counters and all the specs, but also kind of a, a funky system. I love the Nooks, uh, the, the Enthusiast Nooks, because they have a ton of expandability. Inside this case, there's two NVMe drives. There's two memory slots. These are all upgradable, uh, so you can really expand these things. Now, also on the front here, it has some weird features, and you really can't see it from this B-roll, but there's four quad array mic. If you are really wanting to do voice commands and those types of things on your system, it actually has built-in mic that's decent has an SD card slot here at the bottom, moving up a Thunderbolt 4 port with five and nine volt charging. So you can do fast charging, two 3.1 Gen 2 ports, and then finally the 3.5 stereo head jack at the top. Now on the back side, you have a Toslink combo jack. That's a 3.5 millimeter. So if you're doing traditional uh, speakers, you could easily plug those into this back slot. The ethernet port is actually a 2.5 uh, gigabit per second. And then we have four uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2s, another Thunderbolt 4, an HDMI 2.0, a mini display port, and then 19 volts of input, which runs at 11.8 amps giving you up to 230 watts of usage on this little tiny box. Now let's get into the unboxing experience so you can see what to expect if you were to order it from, uh, say, Geek Nook here. I gotta say, aesthetically, this is probably one of the best unboxings I've ever seen. Let's see how we do on the tear. Oh, very gratifying. Uh, regular garbage that we're probably not going to do it. A little quick start guide that we're probably not going to read. Tells you how to plug things in. Um, past that, it does not look like that comes out. We also have a little drawer. We have a standard power cable. I have like a gajillion of those. What's this over here? And this is actually really important. Right here on the bottom side, this is where the intake for the actual 2060 is. So when you lay it down on your desk, you're kind of inhibiting the intake, which will cause the fans to ramp up a little bit more. He said it didn't really affect the thermals that much, but it did cause the, the fans to go a little bit higher than if it was in a vertical orientation. So this right here, pretty much how I want to put it in. And uh, there's little screws to secure this base to here and then just set it down in a vertical orientation. Other notables is back plate. So you'd actually put this and mount it to the back of your monitor if you so choose. And then we also have the actual power supply the, that looks pretty chunky. So here on the desktop, we have our CPU layout. It's an 11th gen i7, four cores, eight threads. Uh, the main board here, obviously everything's Intel because it's an Intel Nook. So that's great for compatibility or if you wanna throw Linux or whatever it might be on here, it's all gonna be compatible. That's the beauty of a lot of Intel products. Uh, it does have PCI Express 4.0. Memory runs at 3200 uh, megahertz, which is fantastic. And then the graphics, you have your, your built-in Iris XE graphics and then the 2060. This is 26 mobile. Uh, so if you're interested in like uh, getting the exact same desktop experience, just know you, this is a mobile, so it's going to run about 10 to 15% behind an FPS of the desktop counterpart. Uh, six gigs of memory with this one, and that's pretty much it for the specs on this device. Now you do notice it is Windows 11 right here, but when I got this, since it is 11th gen, it came with Windows 10. I think it was 21H1. Uh, at the time of it, I did a full upgrade and uh, did all the updates. Now, since again, this is an Intel, it was very easy. It actually comes preloaded with most of the Intel like drivers and support assistance. You're typically gonna wanna hit this, hit check for updates load up your browser of choice, make sure it's all up to date. Uh, and if it's not, it'll download and install. 
the update cycle and how this updates like the firmware is fantastic it's probably the best experience you can get in pc gaming here's here's a I'll cut over to the entire process. It has self-repairing. So let's say the firmware update for whatever reason fails. Since you're launching it from your operating system, it, it's able to fall back onto a good firmware update if there is a failure. Uh, but I didn't have any of this issue. It just powered right through this BIOS. It was it was just amazing. I, I have nothing bad to say about it. All the drivers were very easy to install and find as it just... Uh, the assistant took care of everything. You can also notice on the startup here, it's kind of a cool thing. The, the skull is a theme, and I think you could actually change this. I haven't actually tried to maybe do like my logo or something. I might go into that, but uh, I kind of dig the, the skull type design with a lot of these enthusi enthusiast kits. So for the FPS test, I want to show you in real time kind of how to perform this test. And that way you could actually see, hey, how does this look compared to your current hardware? So we'll use free game from Steam, uh, CSGO, or actually is it free? I'm not sure. If I bought it, I bought it a long time ago. And then grab, go to your workshop and grab FPS Benchmark. And we'll just launch right into Counter-Strike. Okay, from our start menu, we'll just hit play CSGO. One thing on this in your settings menu, make sure you enable developer console because this is going to tell us our average FPS uh, after this run. So we'll hit play come down to workshop maps, hit our FPS benchmark and go. So you'll spawn in right here. And usually what I do is just come up here, select all these on. This actually toggles it on uh, in there, but you could do like a, a config file to do this on startup. But for this one, we'll just do our recommended settings. Once this starts, I'll let this run through. I'll speed this whole section up. You'll just notice uh, right now on the high end, about 500 FPS is what I'm getting. And then when we hit the smoke, you'll see that drop into probably about 60 to 70 FPS. But I'll go ahead and speed through this, and that way we can get our average FPS, and you can compare it to your PC. Our average frame rate was 277. Uh, so, yeah, let me know in the comments. How did uh, your system do? Just tell me, hey, what GPU you're using and what CPU you're using. And uh, give me your average frame rate. I'd, I'd be curious to see how you can stack up to this little tiny mini PC. Did it beat yours? I don't know. But let's go ahead and move on. Now, if we get back on our desktop and we look at our device manager, you can see everything's there. We have TPM 2.0, of course, display adapter, which we have the 2060 and the XE graphics all caught. We have an Intel Optane H10 512 gigs for the actual drive itself. I've been very happy with the performance behind this machine. And if you have the opportunity to do it and it makes sense and you want that mobile aspect or maybe you want to mount it on a wall or the back of a monitor, you can't get much better than the Intel Nook enthusiast kits. I love them. Uh, I know there's newer kits coming out uh, that are more like squarish in box. Kind of reminds me of Shuttle, if anybody remembers those. Uh, but I didn't really want that because it's a little too bulky at that uh, form factor. But time will tell. If I get one of those in, I'll definitely do another video about it just because I love these kinds of designs and kind of minimizing this and, and reducing my footprint. But let me know what I missed and uh, down in the comment section, like the video if you liked it. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.